hello friends welcome back to the canada info Hub channel my name is Folo. i'm so excited to be back again with my face <laughs> Please don't laugh at my face. Anyway, I'm so excited to be back again on this channel. And um, my project is still ongoing, but the pressure has come down a little bit. So I decided I'll share a video this week. And hopefully towards the end of this week, I'll also share another video. So um, I'll have time now to respond to all your emails. Please bear with me, guys. And it was so exciting to note that this channel has gained 50,000 subscribers. Yay! A big thank you to all of you who have subscribed to this channel and have supported me from the very beginning. I never dreamt that I'll get to this point at this time. In fact, when I started it, I was just like, let me just keep pushing out content, whatever it takes me to. And here I am today. So thank you guys for all the subscriptions, all the likes, all the comments and all the emails you have sent i have not responded to i am so sorry i'll try as much as possible to create time to respond to them um luckily the project has part of the project has started so the pressure has reduced and hopefully um by the end of this month i'll be done with the project end of this month end of um, september rather not end of this month end of september i'll be done with the project so i'll be fully free but i'll start responding to emails and comments and all of that just be patient by this week or next week i'll try as much as possible to clear all outstanding emails yeah so um uh, it's so good it's so refreshing to be back again and um I'll be talking about something very, very, very important. You know, this channel is about educating people about Canada, life in Canada, immigrating to Canada. And most of the time I actually talk about immigrating to Canada because um, I find that a lot of people are not really informed about immigrating to Canada, the different pathways of immigrating. And I have done so many videos about the different pathways of immigrating to Canada. But I still find a lot of people still patronizing some group of fraudulent people um, in terms of when it comes to searching for a job, getting a work permit and coming to Canada under work permit. So many people, I, w I don't want to, I don't want to use some kind of negative names for them, but many people are, you know, taking advantage of vulnerable people and giving them wrong information concerning um, the work permits um, way of immigrating to Canada and I want to share what it entails in getting a work permit in Canada so that once you see those adverts that tells you bring five million naira or bring two thousand dollars or bring ten thousand dollars there is a five-year work permit waiting for you in Canada you would know that these guys are fake and these guys are scammers. So I want to share this information so that you will be educated and you will not go looking for those group of people. And the annoying part is, people send me emails to tell me, oh, they want a licensed immigration consultant to work with. I give them a licensed immigration consultant and they still go ahead to look for people who will tell them, just bring $2,000, $3,000, there is a work permit waiting for you blah 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 you know when you see such adverts you just know it's a scam and i'll be showing you some samples of those kind of adverts so that you can run away from them don't pay money to these guys don't lose your hard-earned money to these guys so i will tell you what the work permit process is like in canada so that you are aware and um educate people share this video to people by the end of please just take you to the end of this video so that you get more information and share it to um people now um the first thing you should know about work permit in canada is this number one there are two types of work permit in canada the, there is the open work permit and there is the closed work permit now the open work permit is for certain group of people and it is for people who are let's say i'll give an example i won't give all of the examples because i know some of these guys are also watching this video so that organ you know fine-tune their way of deceiving people so i won't give you all the information but i'll just give you a tiny bit of information that you use to arm yourself now the open work permit is specific to certain group of people um uh, for instance students so let's say a husband comes to canada as a student and 
the wife wants to come to join him in Canada, the wife can apply for a visiting visa and at the same time also op apply for an open work permit. So you cannot just get an open work permit like that, especially if you do not have anybody living in Canada. Now, that's one example. The second example is for people who already are in Canada and are processing their permanent resident status. So this group of people, they can get open work permit and it's some, it is called, it's mostly called bridging open work permit. So those are two examples out of the numerous examples where people can get open work permit. For someone to say, oh, I got a job offer um, from outside Canada and it's an open work permit is a lie. That is one example. That is where they trick people say open work permit, five years open work permit. Please, when you see such adverts, it's a lie. Those guys are first stars. Run away from them. Most open work permits, specifically for people, let's say they have a spouse already in Canada under work permit, and then maybe their spouse wants to come and join them, or their partner wants to come and join them in Canada, they can now get an open work permit. You cannot get a job with an open work permit. Never. Under those conditions, you can never get a job with an open work permit in Canada. So please know the difference. So I hope I have clarified that. Secondly, there is the closed work permit. And this is the type of work permit that is really popular for people outside Canada. This closed work permit is restricted and is restricted to certain employers, restricted to certain locations. So the closed work permit is what most people outside of Canada can get. Like I said, people outside of Canada only few people can get an open work permit and those people are people whose spouses are already working in canada those people they can get open work permit or people who are already in canada and they already are processing their permanent residence application they can get open work permit or postgraduate um, students people who have studied in canada finished from a university in canada they can get an open work permit they call it postgraduate work permit so those are the category of people that can get open work permit anything other than that if you get a job offer you are not getting an open work permit you are getting what you call a closed work permit which is specific to the employer now once you get a closed work permit there are so many conditions attached to that closed work permit and i'm also going to tell you the process how um, employers give people work permit because it is a collaboration between three departments in Canada or three organizations in Canada. The collaboration is between the IROCC, number one, the CBSA, number two, and the EC ESDC. ESDC is actually the organization that issues uh, what you call labor market impact assessment. Now, before I go further, I have to explain what a labor market impact assessment is. The assessment assesses the employer they will check everything concerning the employer they will verify that the employer has a functioning business in canada number one and the employer is paying taxes number two the employer has not violated um the conditions of um employing a foreign worker number three there are so many conditions concerning a labor market impact assessment esdc also verifies that it does not affect canadian jobs let's say People are looking for jobs in Canada and then one employer is saying he wants to employ somebody from outside Canada. I'll give a typical example. People who are accountants or who have studied accounting are looking for accounting jobs in Canada. And then one employer is saying he wants to employ an accountant from outside Canada. ESDC will not give that employer a labor market impact assessment because there are people in Canada looking for such jobs. Now, there are different categories of jobs where people outside Canada or, or employers can actually um, get an LMIA for. And I have mentioned these categories before. The um, caregiving category, the agricultural industry, construction industry, information technology industry, including hospitality. Hospitality before, yes, but because of COVID, no. You know, I've mentioned it before in one of my videos. So take your time to watch that video and you know learn from it these industries if an employer says i have looked for somebody in canada to pick up this job and there is nobody that is when esdc gives the employer 
a labor market impact assessment. So ESDC will verify that the employer is genuine. The employer has advertised that job in job bank and other job sites for at least one month. So if you go to job bank and you see a job that is 30 days old, two months old, three months old, and the employer has not been able to see anybody, contact the employer first of all to find out if the employer is still looking for somebody to take that job. And if the employer says, no, I have seen someone in Canada that is taking the job offer, then you know that that job is not available. But if the employer says, yes, I have not seen anybody, the employer can go ahead and apply for what you call the labor market impact assessment from ESDC. Once the employer gets that LMIA from ESDC, the employer is eligible to give that job offer to someone outside Canada. That's because the employer has exhausted all the options of looking for a candidate in Canada to pick up that job. So if you're just doing your job search, do not focus on current jobs. Focus on jobs that are 30 days old, 60 days old in the job bank or 90 days old in the job bank. And focus on these industries I mentioned. If you focus on something else, it's your business. Anyway, so that's number one. So once the employer gets this LMIA, the employer can now look for someone or if the employer already has somebody to take up the job offer, the employer will give the person the LMIA, a copy of the LMIA plus the employment contract. Now, the LMIA costs $1,000. The employer is the one paying for that, not you, the applicant. It's the employer that will pay for the LMIA. The employer will pay for the LMIA to the ESDC. Um, and then once ESDC confirms that, yes, there is no Canadian, no permanent resident, no temporary foreign worker already living in Canada to pick up that job, the employer can go ahead with the copy of the LMIA and look for somebody to give that job offer to from outside Canada. Now, that's one. Once you get the job offer, the next thing is to apply for the work permit. Like I said, it is usually a closed work permit. You can never get an open work permit. You can never get an open work permit under this category. It has to be a closed work permit or a restricted work permit. So once you get the LMIA, you also have to check the employment contract to ensure that the employment contract with your employer is genuine. The employment contract will state a lot of things. I will show you uh, what the requirements are so that you can look out for these things. Whenever you see these people advertising some fake things, you, you would know you actually know that these are fake and the one I have mentioned is genuine. So the employer will give you the contract. Of course, the employer cannot take any money from you for employing you. Even in most cases, the employer will have to pay for your transportation and in most cases provide accommodation, especially those um, employers employed under the agricultural sector. They will pay for your transportation. They will pay for your accommodation. They'll pay for medical insurance. They'll pay for so many insurance because you're not entitled to these things as a foreign worker. So, um, that is what you need to watch out for. So, if you go and contact these people, please stop contacting them and stop sending me these kind of emails because I'm tired of receiving those emails. Do not contact them. It is better to do your job search yourself. Get a genuine job offer yourself with an LMIA yourself. So once you do these things yourself and then you apply to IROCC, IROCC also has its own obligation to verify that the job offer you got is genuine. IROCC will also verify from ESDC that the LMIA that you are using to apply for your work permit is genuine. IROCC will also verify you as the individual who is the applicant. They will verify that you have the qualifications to do the job. So if you do not have the qualifications or the experience to do the job, they will not give you a visa. IROCC will verify you, the applicants. So when you meet these guys to tell them to do things for you, please, those guys are just eating your money. They are just eating your money and they are doing nothing. And they'll keep telling you stupid stories and your money is gone. You know, so stop patronizing these guys. Stop, you know, throwing away your money when you can do it yourself. Stop it. Just stop patronizing these guys who advertise all this kind of job opposition and say oh teacher nurses these blah 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 stop it don't pay monies to these fraudsters they are just 
stealing people's money and not doing anything they are even going ahead to forge documents for people and then people will use fake documents to apply to IRCC and IRCC will say oh these guys or these people from this particular country they are always bringing fake documents and then the scrutiny will now be more on that country so you see why you have a higher rate of visa denials from African countries is because people are patronizing agents agents are packaging fraudulent documents fictitious documents for work permit application please stop patronizing agents especially if they are not licensed i will leave the iccrc website where you can go and check for licensed um, immigration consultants stop patronizing agents they do harm than good so the third thing i would like to share is the last part where the cbsa comes in like i mentioned earlier it's a collaboration between three organizations in Canada. So it's not just one organization. You have the ESCC that issues the LMIA. You have IRCC that will verify that this person who is making the application has the necessary qualifications and the experience to do the job. And then the third group of people, the third organization that actually confirms if they can allow you into Canada or deny you entrance into Canada is the CBSC. Now, CBSA are the border officers. They also um, check out if anything is genuine or not. So if you get the work permit and you also land in Canada, the CBSA are the guys that you will meet at the border. They will also assess if the, gen the job offer you got is genuine. They will assess if you can do the job. And if they are not convinced that you can do the job, they will send you back. So it is not just a process of getting the job offer. You can get the job offer. You can get the visa and you will still be sent back by the CBSC if they are not convinced about your job offer and there's nothing that you can do about it. So anybody that is looking for a job in Canada, please um, watch this video two times or watch it three times before you send an email. Don't send me an email if you've not watched this video. If you're looking for a job, do the job search yourself. Do not pay anybody any money for anything work permit or LMIA. Those guys are fraud stars. And no immigration consultant will advertise and tell you pay five million, pay ten thousand dollars, pay twenty thousand dollars for adults, fifteen thousand dollars for children. No immigration consultant will do that. No immigration lawyer will even do that. No, they will not advertise telling you to pay a certain amount of money for a job offer never they will never do that so it is better you do your job search yourself it is better you avoid these guys please share this video to your friends share this video to your loved ones share this video to your family members and also thank you for subscribing to this channel and destroying the like button and also um in celebration of the 50,000 subscribers i'll be doing a giveaway which i will talk about in my next video so stay tuned to this channel and invite your friends yes invite your friends and yes i even, I even saw some of my subscribers yesterday i saw them uh on the streets of winnipeg yesterday shout out to you guys i saw three of them the same yesterday as in three subscribers recognized me yesterday and i'm like hey i need to hide myself anyway thank you so much guys and um see you in my next video Bye bye